Okay, you guys have to hear this video from a flat earther that I came across because it's... You'll see. Hey everybody, P-Brain here. Well, do you feel it? Do you feel the earth moving? Okay, so we're off to a great start that we can't feel the earth moving. There's, there's a reason for that, but I'm trying not to bore you straight out of the gate. But suffice it to say that this has been explained to Flat Earthers many times by many people, and they just don't seem to get it. You know that the early part of January is when we go through perihelion, and in particular, we go past periapsis. That's where the Earth is closest to the sun. It's traveling at its fastest orbital speed, and it's negotiating its tightest turn, all while spinning. So do you feel it? Do you feel this ride we're on? No, of course not. Because it's fictitious. We're not moving. <sighs> I, okay, look, if you took a high school level physics class and paid attention, you might know that you don't feel speed, you feel acceleration. And even if speed is incredibly high, acceleration can be pretty low. It's almost as if these flat earth guys don't really have a good grasp of abstract concepts. But let's let's continue on. Let's I want to get to proving them wrong. Being that we feel no motion, no motion can be detected. As you all know, anybody who's honest, if we say, is there any motion? Do you feel motion to this earth? Of course not. We never have. But we should. Uh, no, you shouldn't. But let's imagine that you are on a train and the train is on a smooth, straight path. You can easily walk up and down the inside of the train, even at 100 miles per hour. Same thing with airplanes, especially. At, at cruising altitudes and cruising speeds, they'll be traveling like 575 miles per hour or 926 kilometers an hour. And people feel just fine. At, cru at cru cruising at that speed. We only feel acceleration, a change in velocity, a change in either speed or direction, or, or both. Like, we, we can't feel it if a bus is traveling at a constant speed in a constant direction, but if it slams on its brakes or takes a really sharp turn, we're going to feel it. That's, that's what's going on. But, granted, any particular spot on the Earth is changing its speed and direction. It is. I'll, I'll get to speed in a minute, but as for the change in direction, or as we might call it, the angular acceleration, it's, it's really low. Because even though the Earth's radius is pretty big, the Earth's rotation is really slow. Once every 24 hours. It's not enough to feel. And the same thing with Earth's revolution around the sun, even though that radius is massive. It, it's just, it's just so slow. It's one revolution every 365 and about a fourth days. The Earth's rotation and its revolution around the sun is just so slow that you, you just can't feel it, even with combined effects. I mean, we should, in light of the fact that the Earth feels the rotation, right? The Earth is said to be bulging 14 miles high, gazillions and bazillions beyond measurable tons of Earth, dirt, rock, water, bulging up at the equator 14 miles high, and the Earth is said to be flattening at the poles. The centrifugal force generated by the rotation is said to be doing this, and the, the bulge is tied to the rotational speed. Okay, first off, the Earth bulging at the equator and the poles being compressed those are both the exact same thing, I think. At any rate, I know when you hear 14 miles high, that sounds like a lot, and I get it, because if you had a 14 mile high mountain in front of you, or a, a building, or a, a person, you'd think he's pretty tall. The thing is, the big, <laughs> 14 miles is only 0.35% of Earth's radius. That's nothing. But flurfers here, 14 miles high at the equator, and all of a sudden that means, you know, Earth is supposed to feel like an amusement park ride, and that there's supposed to be a huge mountain range on the equator or something. I don't know. <laughs> They, they hear big numbers and think, oh, it's, it's catastrophic. But 
in reality, all it really takes is the ability to think critically and abstractly, and you'll have figured it out in less than a minute. But then again, that might also require a high school level education that, you know, stuck. But where's the Earth distorting features attributed to the orbit? I mean, it also generates a centrifugal force, so you have both centrifugal forces acting at once. So also, the equator, every 12 hours, would have a 2,000 mile per hour fluctuation, and those living on the equator. I mean, that should cause the ground to heave and ho, especially as the Earth is whipping around, and the, the equator that's on the outside should be bulging out, and then as it goes to the inside, it would relax, and the ground would just be pulsing in and out. <laughs> um, dude, it's, uh, it's not that serious. Okay, look. The centrifugal force that the Earth's rotation would cause is pretty negligible to something on the surface. That's because of just how slowly the Earth rotates, once every 24 hours. Well, it's more like 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds, but who's counting? Uh, but you get the point. And yeah, sure, it is enough to affect the shape of the Earth to some degree. But that's really only because the Earth has a mass of 6 trillion trillion kilograms. And even then, the difference is less than half a percent of Earth's radius. But, but if you think about it, the Earth's revolution around the Sun, its orbit, it takes even longer. Even, even though its radius is much larger, it still takes the Earth 365 days to go around it. Again, not quite, but but whatever. <laughs> that slow of a rotation speed is enough to make the acceleration of Earth going around the sun far less than the acceleration of Earth's rotation in itself. And even that was negligible. <laughs> because when you're on the outside, you would be rotating in the orbital direction and you'd have to add a thousand miles per hour. When you're on the inside, you're rotating against the orbital direction, you'd have to subtract a thousand miles per hour. That's a 2,000 mile per hour fluctuation every 12 hours every day of the year. Okay, you know what? You know what? Let's humor him. Let's humor him. I'm gonna use his numbers. He says it's 2,000 miles per hour every 12 hours, okay? So that's 166 and two-thirds miles per hour every hour, okay? That's two and seven-ninths miles per hour every minute, or zero to 60 in 21.6 minutes. Okay, for comparison's sake, an object in free fall on planet Earth like this is going to experience an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. And that you can definitely feel. You could definitely feel it if you were falling, right? The acceleration that this guy is worried about, though, is 0.02 meters per second per second. So try to imagine, if you will, falling, but at 0.2% the normal rates that you'd fall on planet Earth. You can't. I, I bet you you can't do it. You know why? Because you wouldn't even feel it. You don't believe this is a concept? Well, let's look at how a hurricane operates. Okay, this bit, th this bit is golden. You listen to this. Okay, a hurricane, you could think of it as a spinning, orbiting Earth. And let's say this storm has 100 mile per hour rotational speed because you have the 100 mile per hour rotation plus the 20 mile per hour speed that the storm is moving, you add those together. Okay, on the left side, the winds are rotating against the orbital direction, if you will. You subtract the 20 mile per hour forward speed of the storm from the 100 mile per hour rotational speed, and you get 80 miles per hour on the left-hand side of the storm, the much weaker part of the storm. You just don't get it, do you? You really don't get it? <sighs> All right, let me put it, let me put it to you this way. Okay, he's right that hurricanes are stronger on one side than the other. That's actually very true. But why is that? Yeah, think about it long and hard. Why is that? And why is it always the right side that is stronger? Except in the southern hemisphere, where the left side is always stronger. But viewed from north, anyway. 
and why do hurricanes always rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, but they always rotate clockwise in the southern hemisphere? Why, why is that the case? And hell, why are there hurricanes in the first place? I can tell you this much. The Flat Earth has no explanation for it. There's no reason for any of that on a still flat Earth. And I challenge any Flat Earther to come up with a reasonable explanation for it. This is caused by the Coriolis effect. It's caused by the fact that the Earth is spinning underneath the atmosphere. And the different rotations in the northern and southern hemisphere is caused by the fact that the northern hemisphere rotates in a different direction than the southern hemisphere. Which only really makes sense on a globe-shaped Earth. Look at that! And it also perfectly explains why hurricanes are far more common around the equator, because that's where the Coriolis effect is strongest. But no, flat, flat earthers wouldn't know anything about that. It, it seems like the phenomenon that we see and observe and test and measure is perfectly consistent. No, 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 no. Predicted by a round spinning earth. You are staring right at all the evidence that you really should need, yet you don't have the self-awareness to realize just how idiotic you sound. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. <laughs> yeah, anyhow, I, I gotta go because I'm, I'm suffering from migraines. Before I go, I should let you know that I'm going to be streaming a little bit more on Twitch. If you haven't heard of Twitch, it's a place where you watch people stream things. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to be streaming video editing stuff, so you can feel free to come watch, see how these things are made, and more importantly, chat with me, because you, you know you'd love my personality. Every now and then I'll be playing video games as well, and even if you don't care about the video games that I play because I'm I'm pretty nerdy, you can still just chat with me. It's all about it's all about it's all about me. And you love me. <laughs>